Good afternoon, friends. It is Ashley Fields with Yoda to Us, and we are going to be painting our C9 blanks today. We have these available at yardartrus.com. Um, these blanks are 18 inches tall, 8 inches wide, and they sell for $8. Um, so you could find our blanks on our website as well as if you are uh, someone who uh, does templates and get your own templates, we do have this template also available there. Hi, Cassie. Casey. Cassie. Thank Cassie. How are you doing, my dear? I am going to get this uh, video pulled up. Sorry, y'all. Had an incoming call. I'll have to call him back. Uh, hi, Nancy. Hey, Belinda. So glad you found me again. Y'all, am I on the right page? Because it's not coming through on my end. Oh, there I am. Well, hello. Y'all, we will make this one. Uh, we're going to do it a little different. Okay, so if you happen to look at that listing that I posted, um, <clears throat> I did all of the samples of these C9 bulbs painted, like shaded and all that. Uh, so we're going to do some of them regular, just like our, that are in the photos. And we're also going to do one solid glitter so that you guys can kind of decide which way you might want to uh, paint your bulbs. Y'all, I kind of just refer to these as C9s. Uh, C9 are like, you know, the light bulbs that we put into our um, yard art. And so uh, they're, they're a bulb, but if you hear me say C9, that's what I'm talking about. So hi Ruth. Hey Lauren, how are you? All right, y'all, online I did four different colors. I had red, green, yellow, blue. And for whatever reason, I had four light bulbs in here to do this live, but I can seem to only find three. So we're gonna do a green and a yellow, and then I'm gonna we're gonna move over to the table next to me to do glitter. Thank you. Lauren says, love your hair. You're so sweet. Um, and so we'll have three done today. The one I'm not gonna do is blue. So those of you who are interested in doing these yourself, if you want those colors I used on blue, I used Brilliant Blue as the base and Navy Blue. I paired it with Navy Blue as my shading color. Um, hi, Ruth, how are you, my dear? So uh, this is the only one, like I said, that we won't be doing today because I can't find where my fourth bulb is. It's somewhere around here, but I was telling you guys in my last live that I cleaned up my workshop uh, yesterday and the day before so now I can't find anything because, you know, when it's clean, it doesn't work out for me. I, I don't know. I run on chaos. So when it's chaotic, I seem to know where everything is. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. Y'all are so sweet. All right, y'all. What I went ahead and did on these, uh, this one I did two coats of green and just some gray here at the bottom. Uh, the yellow, I started with a white underneath. Anytime you're working with pastel colors and you struggle with getting uh, your pastel color to stand out and not be you know, transparent, then put white underneath it or even add white to the paint. All right, so we are going to get some shading on here. So basically I always pair my light color with the dark color, right? Same color family. So in this case, I have light yellow as that base and I am doing a uh, shading yellow as my shading color. Let me see. You know, this camera angle is, it's always kind of funky over here. Um, but I'm basically just going to do a little bit of perimeter shading. I think this is also why I love doing these bulbs because they're so fast. You just get a little bit on there. Now I'm going to take what's left in my, my brush and just kind of create like a, like a little shadow. I don't, you can kind of come in here and even come down on that side. You don't have to. It's going to be whatever feels good to you. All right. So the yellow, I'm done shading on the yellow color. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna clean out this brush and we're gonna get some shading here on our green. So same thing like I always do, whatever your base color is, my shading color is gonna be in that same color family, just a darker tone, a darker shade. All right, clean that brush out. Let me cap this yellow before I spill it. And now we're gonna go to dark green. So this is going to be the same exact thing. Y'all, this shader, I don't know what brand it is. Who knows? It's really old. Uh, but I'm going to say it's about a number 12. Again, I refer to shaders. They're really flat tip brushes or called wash brushes. Uh, but we just refer to them as shaders. So again, I know that's not the greatest camera angle. Basically, just kind of set that brush down and follow along that outside. 
And again, just take what's left in my brush and give it some kind of little swish marks. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, I'm gonna put that brush in the water. Now, at the bottom of these bulbs, we have that gray, which also, I think in my samples, I might've even used the Deco Art Silver, which you could always do that too. Um, I went ahead and just kind of made these quick and easy with some gray. Here it is, there it is. It's looking for this darker gray. I call this shading gray, y'all. This is hand mixed by me. All it is is just regular gray mixed with a couple of drops of black. Hi Donna, how are you? If you don't have gray, make it white and black. And then just add a little bit more black to it to get you a darker shading color. All right, now here's where, I keep saying this, I really need to go get me some like number eight brushes. This one is a 12, but it almost looks kind of smaller. I'll, I'll try to use this one. And I'm gonna really just stick on this corner. I don't wanna fill in this whole uh, brush with paint because this is such a small little area down here at the bottom that it can get, if you have a really big shader in there, it's almost like by the time you get that shading on there, it's just gonna be a dark gray kind of blob going on. And so, if you don't have a smaller shader, kind of like me, that's okay, just, just use that corner. I know it looks like it's filling up right there, but I'm trying to just keep that paint in that corner. All right, now I'm gonna do the same exact thing over here. You guys will be surprised how fast you can paint these bulbs. Um, I find it easy, like if I'm actually doing these to sell, I'll probably do something like 50 at a time. Um, now, granted, in my workshop, I have, uh, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 11 tables in my workshop. So I have the space to do large numbers. I know not everybody does. All right, let me show you. I'm done with my shading. These are ready to get outlined. Let me just give you a quick uh, look over of what that looks like. So there's your green option. There is your yellow option. And of course, y'all, you don't even have to do these colors. You can do anything, pink, purple, you can, whatever colors you want. I kind of stuck with more traditional. Um, for us and our customers, our customers definitely like traditional colors more than they like whimsical. They like whimsical style of things, uh, but they definitely, red and green are always your best sellers. Always, always, always. Now, I'm somebody who I like to add in some yellow and some blue, just so I'm not stuck with everything being yellow and green. Hi, Susie. Susie says, so pretty. Thank you, my dear. We're just gonna get a just quick kind of um, blow dry on them. We're gonna throw some black outline and a couple white highlights, then we're gonna move, and I'm gonna show you one that's solid glitter. Meaning, you don't use a paintbrush to do any shading or outlining or anything like that. We'll basically use a mop brush to put a color down, and then put glitter on it and then use um, a squirt bottle to outline it and use more glitter on it. So if you've never gotten to watch a, t a glitter tutorial, stick around. We'll be working on that in like five, 10 minutes. Again, these go really, really quick. These are really simple. All right, grabbing my script liner and a little bit of black. All right, y'all. Now, from here, I am using this Royal Gold Number no. 4 script liner. Now, granted, if you don't want the black, you don't even have to do the black. Uh, me, I just like, I like consistency. So, um, I'm somebody who, I'm also very weird about, like, for instance, if I'm making a, um, like, a display for my own front yard, right, and I have pieces that are, you know, really colorful and stuff like that. Um, and I have all the different colors out there. And I was painting these C9s to match. I would want them to have all the colors and be outlined, you know, kind of in the same manner of everything else that I do. But that's just kind of my brain. And in fact, I think I shared with some of you guys that I am, uh, we are doing National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation theme at our house. For yard art this year so I'm super excited it's gonna be so fun so hi Laura hi Ruth all right y'all y'all are just tuning in at the right time 
We're gonna uh, wrap up these C9s painted versions and then we are gonna do some glittered versions, which I haven't done uh, with this C9 pattern. Last year we had a, a, a similar C9 pattern, but it just had a flat, like kind of square bottom. And those we didn't do painted versions of. We only did solid glitter. So these, I kind of liked the look that was a little bit more um, actual bold, you know, with the base of this piece having these kind of um, ovals going on, but it looks more like a bulb. All right, so there's your yellow. I'm not going to put, I don't like putting black swish marks over top yellow. I just think it's a little bit too dark. Yellow's kind of, yellow, sometimes pink, it really depends. Almost your pastels, I kind of stay away from that. So we're going to basically repeat that same exact thing. Just come in with your script liner and a little bit of black. Nothing too crazy. The nice thing about these blanks, again, is that they have these lines etched on there. So as I put that paintbrush down, I almost just kind of fall into that groove that's already etched on that piece for me and just pull that brush. And then if my paintbrush gets a little out of line, and uh, doesn't follow where I'm trying to take it. I just take my finger, wipe off that paint, and keep going. No big deal. They're not, they don't have to be perfect. They're hand painted, right? There's no room for perfection in hand painting. You just do what you think looks good and what's appealing to your eye and let the rest of it go. And as I'm talking about letting it go, here I am getting a wobbly arm and got kind of a wobbly line. Oh well, I'm not gonna let it bother me. So again, just kind of taking that black, following the perimeter. Now I'm just gonna come over top of those kind of swish marks, and do a little quick black, right? All right. Now, these are done with outline. Only thing they have left is we're gonna put a couple of highlights on them and then we'll work on um, the solid glitter one. The solid glitter is done differently. So I wanted to make sure that we have them separate. Because you definitely, if you're solid glittering anything, you don't want anything else around because that glitter will get everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. All right, just gonna kind of come in and bring those highlights in there down here at the bottom. Same thing. Very simple, very easy. That's completely done. All that needs to do is dry and then I can get poly on it and do that sprinkled glitter that we kind of do on our painted pieces. Bring in that highlight, come down here, boom, boom, boom. Done. Completely done. There you go. All right, so you got yellow and you got green. Again, if you want to do the blue, which I just did not have, I could not find the spare blank I had here to do blue. I used brilliant blue as the background and navy blue as my shading. So let me move this out of the way and we're gonna scoot over. And give me one second, y'all. I'm gonna, you're just gonna travel with me over here. Y'all can see, obviously, I don't have all the good stuff in the background. Let me grab another paintbrush. Okay. Now, now we're going to do solid glitter. Again, I moved to a totally different table because glitter makes a mess. It makes a big mess. And I'd rather make a mess over here where I don't have wet painted stuff. All right, so here is my red bulb. Now, I did not, I didn't think that I was going to do this solid glitter when I had, um, put a coat of red. So if you're doing a solid glitter, you don't have to start with anything on it. It can be completely bare. Simply put your paint on and put your glitter on. Um, I already have one coat of white, I mean one coat of red, but it's fine. We'll make it work. All right, so I'm gonna take my red paint and we're gonna just get some red paint. We're gonna get one even coat across the top. Tammy says, what kind of paint do you use? Tammy, we use um, exterior semi-gloss, um, like house paint, latex house paint. Um, so whenever you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you're buying paint to paint the outside of your house, it's the exact kind of paint that we uh, 
we buy and that we sell as well. So just getting one good coat. Y'all, when you're doing solid glitter, you need to make sure that it's, it, you don't want a thick coat that has streaks, but you don't want too thin of a coat that your glitter's not gonna stick to. If you have barely any paint on there, that glitter's literally gonna fall off. All right, so one wet coat. All right, now, here is my glitter. I should've got a sifter out, but I didn't. Now, typically I have a sifter, like literally a sifter that you would use in your kitchen and just kind of sift that paint on. You gotta get that glitter on there while it's wet. That wet paint is what is acting as your glue to hold that glitter on. So once I get it on there, I just kind of shake it and just make sure that it's all the way across. There is your solid glitter. Look how pretty that is, so sparkly. All right, now bear with me because now I gotta clean up the red glitter right quick. So I kind of just, I keep a lot of, if you can't, can't tell, it's been used when glittering several times. So I'm just gonna put all this glitter right back here in my bucket. And once I get, I wanna make sure that I clean off my workspace, that I have no red glitter. Because now I'm about to switch. Hey, Cars, can you put this red brush in that water for me? Now I'm about to switch to silver, and I don't want my red and my silver mixing, right? So just give it a good sweep, clean off your space. Got a I got a little bit of red glitter that's just kind of sitting down there. All right, now one thing I do always do is just kind of knock it and make sure that that excess red comes off. The reason I always kind of knock it on the ground is I don't want any of that red glitter that comes off to get mixed with my silver, or if you're doing stockings, get it mixed with your white or your clear, and then it's just going to be a big mess, right? So we got that red on there. Now, typically, I would wait for this to be dry, but for the sake of a live, I'm going to have to keep moving. Now, this is my gray paint. Can you give me a couple minutes? You'll have to give me a few. Uh, this is my gray paint. I know it looks white. This was an old white paint bottle. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is just shake it up really good. You need a nice fine tip. This is one tip, cars check that door, that I did not cut off of my paint bottle. And that's because I need it to be nice and small so I can get a skinny lip, skinny perimeter on here. So make sure you guys can see that. So basically what I do is I have this full. And in order to make sure that I get a flow in my paint, I kind of start down here at the bottom and I'm just letting gravity bring that paint to the base of my paint bottle so that when I start going around, I don't have chunks where that paint is skipping. So I'm just gonna use very light pressure and I'm just creating, you know, like a, uh, an outline boundary. See that outline boundary so notice I start at the base and I end at the base can you guys see that my start and stops now down here I'm gonna again just take another mop brush get some gray paint on here just to where it's covered remember I don't want it too thick because if it's thick and I have like globs of paint on there, whenever this dries the glitter is gonna fall into the bottom of that glob and that glob is gonna kind of rise up all right, so I got that, got that gray painted on the base. And now, same thing I just did with the red glitter, I'm just doing it with the silver glitter. Sprinkle it on and cover up where that wet paint is. You want every square inch of wet paint covered. So I'm covering that lip that I placed on there that kind of creates that boundary. And I'm covering that base. That is how you could do a solid glitter C9 bowl. Now, let me also just give you a quick pointer on that. Notice I used silver as my base color. If I were to use white or clear glitter at the bottom, this red glitter over time is going to end up um, bleeding into that white or clear at the bottom. That's why you use silver. 
because the red will not bleed into silver. But if it's lighter, like a white or a clear, the red will bleed. So anytime you're doing anything, uh, specifically really C9s, because if this was a stocking and I had the white or the clear at the top, my red's not gonna bleed up, right? It's only gonna bleed downward when it's standing in the ground. So uh, well, that's why I always do silver or black. I don't know if you've ever worked with black glitter, but it's like the most staticky thing and it literally sticks to everything, including your skin, including you, and you can never get it out. So I kinda stick with silver, it's easier. Uh, Tammy says, is that just regular glitter? Yes, just regular clock craft glitter, Tammy. We actually sell it at Yard Art R Us. You can go on our website. I want to say it's under paint supplies. Um, or you could get it at Hobby Lobby. Just regular craft glitter. So I just used uh, red paint with red glitter and gray paint with silver glitter. And there is your solid glittered C9 bulb. So let me grab my other ones. I want to see what you guys, what's your favorite? Do you think you like glittered or painted better? Here's your painted and glittered. Obviously they're very different looks. And if you guys are uh, like maybe painting these to go along your driveway, you, there's nothing to say you can't flip it over and paint the back and have them double painted. And you could even have a painted side and a glittered side. These are reversible. Now, the back wouldn't have any, any lines, but you could easily create a couple lines at the base. Uh, but what is your favorite, glittered or solid? I have to know. Ruth says, love it. Hey, Debbie. Um, let's see, Tammy says, I like them both. Thank you, Tammy. Hey, Gail, how are you? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you guys today. Debbie says she's parcel, she likes the glitter. Yes, y'all, glitter's fun, and if you've never done solid glitter, it's, it's a easy, easy way to kind of dip your toe into yard art and into glittering and into, you know, kind of getting in that Christmas spirit. It's so much fun. Uh, it does make a mess, so <laughs> try to glitter outside. Take it from me. Stay away from carpets and, uh, you know, fabrics. <laughs> Leticia says both. Thank you so much. Oh, y'all are so sweet. Susan says, I think I like the painted best. Susan, yes. And I am, I'm a partial, I'm always more partial to painted stuff. It's obviously, it's what I do for a living. I just love it. Uh, so thank y'all so much for hanging out today. Again, the link is provided for these. We sell these for $8. If you'd rather have a template, we also have the template available. I think the templates, I don't know, four bucks, five bucks. I have no idea. Couldn't even tell you, but it is on the website underneath our Christmas templates at yardartrus.com. All right, y'all. That's all I have for you guys today. I will see you guys next week with lots more Christmas and July tutorials. Y'all enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you later. Bye guys.